Well, hello everyone. Just wanted to give you a quick update on my rooftop solar installation. Uh, I've had a few people have asked me about that, how it's working out for me. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to go over that with you. Bottom line is it's working out really well for me. Um, it came as a portable one. Uh, the charge controller right on the back of it. You just connected it to the battery. But And there are some conveniences with portable. Uh, like you can technically park in the shade if you can actually reach the sun. But the way the sun moves around, that usually doesn't work out so good anyways. But... You, know, you can move it around and there are some conveniences you don't have to worry about mounting it or anything but uh, bottom line is that you're also not able to be charging while you're driving unless you have a solenoid or isolator in there and I do not at this point so uh, putting it on the roof allowed me to have solar coming in anytime the sun's out whether I'm driving or parked or no matter where I am if I'm out doing errands it doesn't matter I'm still getting power so that's been a real good deal for me I did go around when I was done with it and repaint the sides uh, to make sure that everything was the same color covered up the bolts with black paint and everything that worked out really well made it a lot more discreet uh, less noticeable um, basically nobody ever knows that it's a solar panel until I point it out to them so that's worked really well um, I do have it a very simple installation here uh, you know connects to the MC4 connectors on the cable on top I can disconnect those if I need to move things around uh, and then the wire just runs down through the back of uh, the back door uh, that is not the right way to do it uh, and I don't recommend that you do that uh, if you have an option um, I initially ran it through the side window the vent window on the side and it leaked both rain and snow uh, so now it's running through the back here. I was very careful when I did that to make sure that it was in a place that's not likely to leak, but also that it's not pinching the wire and likely to cause it to fray, because that would be the big concern there. You don't want it to fray or, and uh, short out, because um, you have constant power coming from that panel whenever it's uh, the sun's on it. So I didn't want that to happen. So. I was careful with that. I do keep an eye on it, and it's also uh, worth noting here that I almost never open this back door. Um, I just get everything from inside, so there's not a whole lot of risk of anything happening to the wire. Uh, the right way to do it is to drill a hole through the roof and use a gland, which uh, is a device that allows you to run the wires through it and seal it off good, so hopefully you don't have any leaks. The reason I did not do this on this van is, as I mentioned before, I don't suspect this is going to last a long time. Uh, the transmission's acting up, uh, and it's pretty old. It's got a lot of miles on it. So uh, I don't want to do a lot of crazy things that are difficult or complicated or expensive or anything. I'm trying to keep everything modular and easy to move to my next vehicle uh, when this one does die. Uh, so I'll go in and give you a quick tour now of how the rest of the setup system, now that I've uh, shown you that. Hey, so on the back side here, the... Uh, this is the wire for the solar panel that comes down through and it comes down and it just comes into the charge controller Which I have mounted on a sidewall here. This is just an inexpensive charge controller that comes with that kit uh, Basically the two wires go up uh, Here underneath into the charge controller and then the two wires come back out to go to the battery My battery is installed here under my kitchen. Uh, it's just an inexpensive uh, like hundred dollar deep cycle from Walmart um, Nothing fancy, but it, uh, I bought it when I was still in a car and didn't have a very good uh, system to charge it. There is a uh, common understanding amongst uh, experienced RVers and van dwellers that you may as well buy cheap batteries for your first one because you'll probably kill them anyways. Uh, that's been the case with this one. I wasn't able to charge it properly when I first got it, so it does not perform well. This is actually the weak spot in my system right now is the battery. Uh, as soon as the sun goes down, I generally don't have power for very long because it doesn't hold up well. So that eventually needs to be replaced. Uh, as far as how I get power out of the battery, I have this device here, which is has a US, two USB outlets and a 12 volt outlet. Uh, and then I also have an inverter here, which again has uh, USB outlets on it, as well as uh, a couple of standard 120 AC. And that allows me to get power out I need. I use a cord here to get power up to the front of the van for when I'm working on the laptop or whatever. And I also you know, can charge things back here, like recharge my Ryobi tools or uh, cell phones, that sort of thing. So that's basically that. It gets a little more complicated if you have multiple panels or something. But as far as with just a uh, single panel and a single battery, it's fairly simple to set up and install. And uh, it's working pretty well for me. Uh, I don't have any complaints about it. Like I said, other than the battery isn't holding up well, uh, which is not surprising. But other than that, it meets my needs and uh, it gets the job done. 
Right. One of the big questions a lot of people have when we talk about solar is how much do you need? And bottom line is more is usually better. Um, this meets my needs uh, with uh, you know running a laptop computer and recharging like cell phones and things like that occasionally. Um, I could not run a refrigerator uh, on it in addition to uh, my, my laptop. It just doesn't have enough power. Uh, I can pull in four or five amps per hour on uh, when it's sunny but my laptop uses between three and five an hour when I'm using it so I'm not going to run a refrigerator on that as well a refrigerator there will you have to guess a little bit uh, unless you do a lot of tracking on it because the rating on them tells you how much it uses power it uses when it's running but it's not always running so you know uh, you can safe number 30 40 50 amps depending on weather in a day so there's no way I could run the laptop and the refrigerator It'd be one or the other um, Probably, if you're trying to do both, you're probably going to want to be up into the 200 to 300 watts of solar minimum would be my recommendation. Um, and of course, the other problem is like if it's cloudy, it's a little bit cloudy today, so I'm getting still some power in. But when it gets like rainy or really heavy clouds, I get one amp in per hour or or less. Um, and in the winter time, it's also hard to get a real good charge. You have fewer hours when you're getting peak charge. So more you, you ideally you want to get more solar than you think you're going to need because some days those going to weather's not going to cooperate or in winter time when the sun is lower on the horizon you're not going to get as much power either so that's kind of a quick overview of my system it is working well for me um, that portable system is a great way to go if you're getting started with solar because it's very easy to get started with all you just connect the clips to the battery and put the thing in the sun and you're good to go it also can be mounted on the roof like i've done if you decide you want to do that at a later date so good way to get started i'll throw a link to this one in the description in case you want to check it out meanwhile thanks for watching hope you enjoy this tour and got a little better idea of how i'm doing it with solar here thanks everybody we'll see you in the next video